It's gone quiet, so I think that means I'm meant to start. Um, so I really was not expecting to be in this room, and I'm kind of astounded there's so many people in this room. Are you sure you're in the right room? <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing, but... Um, okay, so my name's Adrian Moat. Um, I'm a technical community advocate, or DevRel, if you will, for ChainGuard. At ChainGuard, we build minimal, low CVE container images. So this is one of my favorite quotes about um, containers. It's probably a decade old. It's by Brian Cantrell, who is a, you know, if you ever get a chance to see a Brian Cantrell talk, do. He's always amazing. But he said, Docker is doing to apt what apt did to tar. So way back in the day, we used to use tar balls to ship software around. You know, you just put your stuff in the tar.gz and send it around. And that was okay, it kind of worked, but there was always problems with dependencies that would work in my machine, but not in somebody else's machine. Um, and then we started using things like putting stuff, more stuff into the package managers and Linux distributions. Um, and that was a lot better, because our package managers would take care of figuring out the dependencies and so on. And then Docker took it even a step further um, by packaging everything up down to the operating system layer. Uh, and that got us much better reproducibility and solved this, it works on my machine problem. So that's kind of what that, that quote's getting at. But even if you look at your package manager formats, your DEBs, your APKs, your RPMs, etc., if you squint, they're really just a tarball plus a little bit of metadata around versions and dependencies. There's not much else. Oh, oh I'm too. And it's the same with container images. They're really just packaging for an application. It's just a file system and some metadata. And theoretically, at least, they're not that difficult to create a container image. There's even standards documents that tell you exactly what files you need to get in there to get a running OCI container image. So you might think, well, everybody will create their own container build tooling. But we've not really seen that happen, or at least we've not really seen people create good container build tools. We've maybe seen a lot of build tools, but not a lot of fantastic build tooling. Um, so what are some of the things we would like to see in an image builder? Well, ideally, if you want to, your base of image builder is going to be able to build minimal image. So what do I mean by that? I mean, like, our image should only have our application and its immediate dependencies. I don't want lots of operating system components or other things bloating the image. It should be fast. You don't want to be waiting a long time for images to build. Reproducible, that's an interesting one. So this is kind of a sliding scale. So Docker's fairly reproducible. You run it twice, you get more or less the same thing out, but you don't get something that's bitwise reproducible. As in, I don't get a binary that if I compare it, I'll get exactly the same thing bit for bit. Because there tends to be things like file time, timestamps, and the UC build IDs, I think we solved the build IDs one. And then there's some other points that may or may not be important to you, like simplicity. I mean, typically I'm going to prefer a simpler build tool but if you want to do something like uh, organization-wide, you may have a platform team that's responsible for your build tool, and therefore simplicity may be less of an issue. Uh, some people may really care about SBOMs. I suspect that might be a, a bigger thing in the future. I had planned to talk about SBOMs, but um, I don't know if you, you read the abstract from my talk. I put far too much in there. Uh, so that's one of the things I've trimmed a little bit. Um, generic. So another thing we see with build tooling is you get things designed for specific ecosystems. Um, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, but you also get build tool and design to build anything. So this is where we came from. So if you were using Docker you know, 10 years ago, or eight years ago, then you did a Docker build something like this. And this still works, and still a perfectly valid way to build a Docker image, especially if you're just doing something locally. So in this case, we're just using the, the upstream Golang image, we're compiling our Go application, and we're setting an entry point. And that works. As you're probably aware, 
The problem is that we've still got all our build tooling in that image. So our final image doesn't just have our application, it's got all the build tooling, it's got all the stuff in the underlying Debian operating system that we don't really need to run our application. And ideally, I would like to get rid of that um, because it's just a source of potential CVEs and problems. Um, yeah, with Docker, we still have this problem that it's not entirely reproducible, but it's fairly reproducible. Um, and then we got multi-stage builds. I can't remember exactly when multi-stage came out, but that was really a huge step in my opinion. So if you combine multi-stage Docker builds with minimal runtime images, then I think that's actually one of the best ways still to build container images. So in this example, I'm using ChainGuard's Go image to build our Go application. I could as well have used the, the, the Go image from before. Um, I am doing zgo enabled equals zero, which will give me a static image. Uh, that static image I'm copying over to the ChainGuard static image um, for the runtime image container. And in this way, I end up with a very small final image that doesn't contain all the build tooling, et cetera. And it'll just be a few megabytes in size. Uh, in this case, I've used the ChainGuard static image. You could also use the Google Distrolist image. They're honestly fairly similar. Some of you might be saying, well, could you also use Scratch, like the completely empty Scratch image? And that will work in some cases running a static binary. Where it falls down is that a lot of applications in Linux require or expect a few more things from the host environment. For example, TLS certificates is a really common one. Like if you want to talk to anything securely, you're going to need TLS certificates in your container. Other things include a user. Some applications expect a Linux user to be present, um, slash temp directory, things like that. And that's exactly what the static images give you, just enough to run uh, the average static binary. So, yeah, that's a huge step forward. Um, you're typically not going to have any CVEs in this image unless, like, you're, you know, you've pulled in CVEs via the, your Go dependencies or something like that. Um, we're still using Docker, so there's still some issues around reproducibility. The other thing is you need to have... The example I showed there worked for if you can compile a static binary. But say you have a Java, a Node, a Python project, then you need to use a different image, uh, a minimal runtime image for that stack. So if you look at ChainGuard images, we do have minimal runtime images for all those. So do go check out our images if you want to use this approach. Google also have a, um, several more. But the example I showed there was with um, Go. And there's actually an even simpler way to get uh, a minimal image with Go, and that's to use this tool called KO. Um, and in that case, there's not even any config files unless you want one. You can literally just type ko build and you go project, and it's going to build a, a, a minimal image container with your Go application. And I think it actually uses a chain guard static image by default. So if you're using Go, that's definitely one to check out. But you might be thinking, well, hang on, you're talking about these distillers images. How are these distillers images made? And can you use the same build tool that's used to make the distillers images yourself? Uh, and the answer is yes, you can, but you might not want to. Um, so Google Container Tools Distillers is built with Basil, or Basil, whatever it's called. Um, and what they basically did was take Debian and hacked everything out of it to get a minimal image. Um, ChainGuard Distillers Images, we have our own build tool called APKO, and we use the Wolfie operating system, or Linux distribution, which is our own Linux distribution. OK, I'm going to try and do a few brief demos. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. OK, so first one is Basil. Am I in the Basil directory? That's the first thing. We're in Dagger. That's not going to help. Can people see this okay? 
Sorry, make it bigger. It's good? Okay. Oh, <laughs> one person talk. Make it bigger, okay. I think the problem is it's at the bottom. Okay, so um, this is the example, Basel examples from a company called Aspect. Aspect are great, they do lots of stuff around Basel. Uh, Basel is phenomenally powerful, it's also phenomenally confusing. Um, here's the build file. I probably shouldn't say that. It is, it's just very powerful, and uh, well, my feelings will become clear from this example. So this is the build file. It's actually reasonably straightforward. Um, you can see unsurprising things, like it's telling you what the sources are, what we're going to build, the libraries, the binary. We're going to put in a tar file. The OCI image uses a tar file and also uses a distrolist base. And that's kind of it. Interesting, well, another bit is we have a modules file. And because there's a, lot of, a high, big focus on reproducibility and supply chains in Basel, um, you have a modules file that specifies the versions of everything. Uh, so that's that there. Um, and notice we actually pull in the Google Distrolist base image here and specify the, the, the digest. And that's kind of interesting because ideally you would think in Basel you'd want to build everything from scratch for supply chain reasons. There's not any really good reason why we're pull, pulling in an external base image rather than creating one here. Okay, now I've built this before, so this should be fast. There we go. So yeah, it's, it's very, very fast to rebuild things. The first time you build something, it does take a little bit longer. And that's built this tarball. It is a Docker image. I can do this, and it will load it into Docker. I'm not going to bother running whatever the image is. I'm just showing it is a Docker image. Um, one thing that I, and it is also very small, um, ls-lh. So that tarball is 10 megabytes. So we are getting minimal images out. Um, one thing I expected to happen that doesn't happen, I'm not sure why. So if I do sha sum on that, I get that. And then if I... Yeah, and rebuild it, I get a different sha sum. So I assume there's a timestamp or something like that in there. Um, I was expecting to get exactly the same sha sum, but clearly I've done something wrong or I don't understand something. I did try and look at this, so I, I, I typed this command. And this kind of sums up my feelings about Basil. This is the help for the build command. <laughs> You're laughing. This is probably a halfway. It's insane. It's still going. There you go. Um, so you'll forgive me for giving up at that stage. Um, so that's Basil. Um, it's very powerful, but yeah, it's also very complicated. Um, but yeah, you get minimal images out of it. I think the big thing, though, is Basil will build everything, right? It builds your Go code, it builds your Java code, it bu builds your C code, um, and provides like complete sort of supply chain solution. It's not really just for building container images. Uh, so if you want to get into Basil, you're going to know what you're doing, I guess. Oops, didn't click that. Uh, okay, so. The other alternative is APCO or APKO. I've never, like, we built it. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah. We can do an example of this as well, which is hopefully a lot simpler. So I do have some old build files lying around, but the only file of interest is this build.apko file. Um, so all we're specifying is the repository. In this case, we want to get APKs from the Wolfie repository. You could also use Alpine. You can't mix and match them because Wolfie is compiled against glibc and, and Alpine's muzzle. But um, yeah, you can use either here. And we're saying we want to create a container image with the package's Wolfie base and CA certificates bundle, uh, and also set in some metadata. 
on the image. And that's it. You can't do anything else in AppGo. Everything inside your container image has to come from an APK. You can't pull in random files. You can't, you know, there's no equivalent of Docker run commands, for example. So it's much, much simpler and less powerful, arguably. But uh, OK. And then if I do AppCo build, that's what you get. So um, hang on, can I go a hash? So in the, what we're saying is AppCo build, specify the architecture, then the build file, which is build the AppCo, the name of the image, which is going to be Wolfie Base. So this image literally is just an image with a, a shell and not a lot else. Um, and then the file that it's going to save out to. So it's created this Wolfie Base.tgz file. Again, you can do Docker load Wolfie Base. That loads the image. Again, it's going to be fairly small. There's a little bit more in this, so I guess it's maybe 15 megabytes or so. Oh, six megabytes, perfect. Um, but if I do SHA sum A then two times six. So I get this very nice SHA sum in this case. It starts with the word added, just by random chance. Um, so let's RM that. And rerun the build. And I get exactly the same shaft from out. So that is bitwise reproducible. Um, of course, there is a little bit of a gotcha, or not gotcha, but thing to be aware of. In this case, I haven't specified the exact versions of these packages. You, of course, would need to specify the exact versions if you want this to be reproducible in like a few weeks' time. OK, so that's AppCo. Um, yeah, simple, declarative. We've shown it to be reproducible. You get a minimal image out. Um, I've written Compose as well with Docker files. So like, we use AppCo to build this tool as minimal runtime images that you can then use with Docker files to put your application code on top. Because you probably don't want to be building an APK for your application code and using app code to create the final image. I mean, you can, and it's not a bad thing to do, but I guess most people aren't going to do that. And the other thing is, of course, if you use an APKO, you're dependent on Wolfie packages. You can create your own packages with either APK tools or Melange, which is our way of creating um, APKs. And interestingly, we also have a rules APKO uh, for Basel that was created by Aspect again, I think. And that solves the problem I mentioned before about Basel pulling in an outside image. So if you use rules APKO inside your Basel build, you can end up with sort of a fully hermetic build from scratch, which is nice. OK, this one is interesting. Um, Canonical came out with something called Chisel Containers. This is basically their version of Distralis. Um, and they've managed to create a uh, very minimal. Um, the two examples I've seen are .NET and JRE. I'm not sure they've released many other images. Um, but the ones they have released, they're definitely minimal, you know, no CVEs or low CVEs, um, and they look pretty good. Um, the way they did it is kind of interesting. They use something called Rockcraft. So Rockcraft, I think this is what creates the image. I couldn't actually run it because it's all Ubuntu and Snap based, so I couldn't install it. I guess I could have created a Docker image, but yeah, I wasn't actually that interested after I played with it. Um, so this is going to create, I think, a Docker image. And this, it, this is basically like telling it what packages we want to install. So this is saying install the hello package. But you can also ask it for what it calls slices, which you know, is, is continuing the chisel metaphor. So I guess you chisel out slices. Um, and then you, you type something like hello bins, and it'll only install the binaries from the hello package, assuming the bin slice has been defined. 
So that's interesting. And the next question, of course, is how do you define these slices? So this is the example from the Rockcraft um, tutorial. Um, and we have an example of slicing up the OpenSSL package. So what we're saying here is I want to create a bin slice that only has OpenSSL, um, C rehash, and the libraries required to run that. So what we're saying is, yeah, we're going to need libc, libssl, uh, some config files, and these two binaries, but I don't want anything else. So you know, it's going to cut out a lot of stuff. And then it, it says it does need the config. So down here, we also have a bunch of config files that we're specifying in a separate slice. And my sort of issue with that is kind of right on the slide as well, because these are all hard-coded paths. So what happens when the APK changes a path or the name of a file? Presumably a slice breaks and you have to update it. So it does seem a bit manual and potentially error-prone. So definitely seems kind of useful. Um, they've had some good results with it. I'm not entirely convinced how generally applicable it is. Also, it, it very much ties into the whole um, canonical ecosystem with charms, etc. Yeah. Uh, build packs. Has anybody used build packs? Yeah, one or two. <laughs> it doesn't seem hugely popular. Um, yeah, build packs. The main thing about build packs is kind of e easy to use and automatic. Uh, sort of pick up your config and do a, a build automatically. Um, I didn't realize this, but there seems to be multiple implementations of build packs. I used uh, Paketo, if I can find this sample. But I wasn't overly impressed with the defaults, I have to say. So yeah, this is just, like, there's, no, there's no build pack config here. It's just um, a simple Go project. You run it with pack, there we go. So we're saying pack build my application uh, using the Paketo Go build pack, and we want the jammy base, so it's using a Debian base image. I've run this before, so it should be fairly fast. The first time I had to download a whole bunch of images. Um, there is some support for SBOMs. I don't think it analyzes the Go dev, so. OK, and that's built my image my app. Now, unlike some of the other ones, it's not built a tarball. It has actually loaded that straight into the Docker cache. And my problem is that, by default, it builds quite a large image. So it's like 121 megabytes. And if I do, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure if they're keeping it up to date or it's just that, that Base image has a lot of CVEs, but it's not like a, it really doesn't seem a great default. Well, the other thing that happened, and I haven't even figured out how to fix this, is if I try to run it, it turns out it's built an uh, AMD64 image, even though like I ran it on an ARM platform. I kind of thought I would have figured out, hang on, you've run it on ARM, let's build an ARM image, but it didn't. I'm sure I can just pass a, a flag somewhere and it will fix that. Um, the other thing I should say is, um, I've forgotten the guy's surname, but there's somebody called Ram that wrote for the, the new stack, and he wrote a great article on using Wolfie as a, a base image for build packs, which will solve quite a lot of my criticisms there. Anyway, um, that's build packs. The, I guess the big thing is, I've shown it there for Go. There are examples for Java, Ruby, Python, etc. And again, it's like, zero or low config, it should just work sort of thing. Um, build kit and Dagger, yeah, so this is one of my favorites. So Dagger is actually built on top of build kit. Um, if you're not aware, build kit is the engine underpinning Docker build. Interesting thing is Docker files just scratch the surface of the power of build kit. I think they always want to create a better front ends, but they never entirely managed it for whatever reason. But Dagger does try to take advantage of more of the, the power of the build kit engine. Now, Dagger isn't designed just for building container image. It's really designed to solve the whole CI-CD problem. 
um, where you know you, you want you're trying to debug CI/CD, but it works differently. But you, you can't run it locally, or at least it doesn't run the same locally as it does remotely, and you end up you know with 20 commits that are all like works this time, sort of, and it always continues to fail, and you're pulling your hair out. So that's the what Dagger's aimed at. Um, oh yeah, let's see the Dagger example. So uh, Dagger. So in Dagger, the real sort of powerful thing you can do is define your build pipelines in code, and you can kind of see there like it's designed for assembling powerful build pipelines from multiple functions. In this case, I've used Go. There are like front ends for various different languages, um, and what we're saying here is we're defining a function, build and publish. Um, and there's multiple modules that you can already use in Dagger. So DAG is the short for Dagger. Um, we're using the Wolfie module. So I think it was Solomon himself, or Dagger anyway, uh, have created a Wolfie module that creates a Wolfie-based container. So this DAG Wolfie dot container is going to return a container object uh, called CTR. And then in this step, we're calling the Golang module, and we're calling build container. It's going to build our Golang source, and it's going to build it on top of this container image that we're passing in. And then we're going to call publish, which is going to upload the image to a registry. Again, this is just the, the basic example from the docs. I've not written this myself. Uh, I've already run it. Oh, that was lucky. So, uh, to, to sort of call Dagger functions, it's Dagger call. So we're calling build and publish, which is the name of that uh, function we defined a minute ago. Uh, we pass it a couple of arguments to do with the build source and build args. And one really nice thing about Dagger is it gives you um, quite nice output, I have to say, and like updates on what it's doing. It does everything in parallel and caches everything, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's really quite fun output, I have to say. And there we go, it's built that, and it's pushed it up to this registry. So I should be able to do... I should have changed this to say hello KubeCon, shouldn't I? I didn't. Use a local bin hello? I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, it's because I didn't spell local, right? Also, my thing is coming off the edge of the screen. Hey, there we go. Okay, so that's Dagger. Um, very powerful. You can define things in code, but it's really designed for the CI/CD problem more than just building containers. Um, the real strength, though in Dagger is the modules. So they have something called a Daggerverse, um, and people are submitting their own modules. There's modules for things like APQ and Wolfie already. Um, so yeah, um, I really do recommend checking out Dagger. It's pretty fantastic. And the last thing I want to mention is Nix. So I thought Nix was going to be a fantastic solution when I started this. Um, like, has anybody else looked at Nix? Put your hand up. Yeah. How many people agree that it's like going down a rabbit hole? Yeah, it, yeah it's... So, I, theoretically at least, Nix is a fantastic solution for building containers because it's designed to be reproducible and it should be possible to create minimal containers. The problem I had is there's a thousand different ways to do things and everybody tells you a different way to do it. So I started down here at the bottom with the example from the docs. I never actually got that working completely because I think there was some issue with macOS that apparently is possible to solve, but I don't know how. Um, then there's actually a really nice blog by Mitchell Hashimoto, um, and he wrote about how he builds things um, with Nix and uses, mixes it with Docker files. So quite an interesting approach. I don't think it's an idiomatic approach, um, but he has a lot of success with it. Um, then when I talked to somebody, they told me, no, don't do that. Have a look at this example that uses flakes. 
Um, I'm pointing me at Discord, um, but it was, it, was, it was more than I could get going. Um, and then two weeks ago in Hacker News, somebody had a, a talk called Building Better Docker Images with Nix or something. Um, and they had a fourth way of doing things. So there's four different ways of doing it, and I do not know which is the correct way, or if there is a correct way, or if it even is an idiomatic way. Um, and that's my problem with Nick, so I'm not even going to show an example. Um, yeah, but I did find this great quote in the Hacker News comments about that last article. Somebody said, Nix, I love it, but sometimes it feels like being a Morty on Rick's adventure to compiler land. And yeah, I really like that quote, because that was very much my experience. OK, so wrapping up, what would I recommend? I think it's like <laughs> both Basil and Dagger kind of are uh, trying to solve bigger problems than just building containers. So Basil you know, builds everything. Um, it doesn't just build containers. It's going to build all your source code, et cetera. And I guess Dagger is as well. Um, you're only going to use Basil if you want like supply chain guarantees and things like that. I guess you're going to know what you're getting into when you start playing with Basil. Otherwise, I wouldn't touch it. Um, Dagger, I think Dagger's going to be pretty big. I think it's a really pretty nice solution to the CI-CD problem. Uh, and for that reason, it might end up being used in quite a lot of smaller projects as well, as it is quite easy to get going with. Um, yeah, so if you have trouble with CI-CD, and I think we all do, um, then definitely take a look at Dagger. Um, after that, if, you, if your project is just like a small project and you, it's in like a specific ecosystem like Go or, or Java, um, I would probably look to see if there's a specific build tool, tool for that ecosystem. So if I had a Go project and I just wanted to create a container image for it, I would just use Co, KO, because that's, it'll work and it's like zero effort and it gets me a good result. Um, I've not played with it too much, but there is Jib for Java that I assume does something very similar. For like a generic tool that you can use um, across multiple teams, et cetera, I would be use, still be using multi-stage Docker builds with distroless base images for your run things. Yeah, so please go and check out the chain guard distroless images um, and see how they work for you. But honestly, for the majority of people, I think that's the simplest good solution, where you end up with minimal, low CV images um, that you can run in production. Uh, you know, you're obviously welcome to, to play with Apco. For most people, I don't think it's... I, I think you're only going to want to play with Apco if you have a specific use case that Apco is good for, because you're going to need to put everything you need into an APK. Uh, next. Honestly, there's no point in putting Nix here, because if you like Nix, then you're not going to listen to me anyway. You're going to use it. So yeah, go ahead. Is it, but Nix probably is a fantastic solution. I just couldn't find it. Um, and yeah, on that note, thank you very much. That was all I have. <laughs>